Hi and welcome to this video. In this video, we will understand three most important terms used in the DevOps world. First is DevOps, second is SRE and third is Platform Engineering. Now let's understand each term one by one and how they are different from each other. So what does DevOps do? The main task of DevOps as we have discussed in our previous videos as well. The main task is to reduce the operations and increase the efficiency in our workflow. So what does DevOps do? A DevOps engineer mainly automates the infra. He or she creates a CI CD pipeline, a structure, continuous integration and continuous delivery. All the tasks related to Docker, creating Docker file, running Docker scans, running test analysis. He or she is also responsible for infra provisioning. Also, in the world of private and public clouds, there is a lot of EC2 instance involved. So, a DevOps engineer needs to make sure that those EC2 instances are actually valid with the security and compliance of your corporation or your, your organization that you are working for. Also, they run K8 administration like Kubernetes administration. They are responsible for that. They are responsible for creating clusters, deploying ingress service in it. And once all those EC2 resources are being used, they should see that no resource is being wasted. So they are also responsible for checking out the or monitoring the stale resources that are not being used. So that way they can make sure that the company's cost effectiveness is in place and no resource is being wasted. Each resource, each EC2 storage, anything related to cloud is mainly useful. It is not being wasted. So that's what DevOps engineers are mainly responsible for. And now let's come to the SRE part. What does SRE people do? So this term here, SRE, it stands for Site Reliability Engineer. Let's understand it in this way. Suppose uh, someone is developing a product and they have deployed that product onto the Kubernetes cluster and they have created a endpoint so that you, me or the end users can access that product. Now, before we buy any product, uh, the most important part of the product is the stability part. Whether the product is scalable or available over the time, let's say Amazon Prime or any other service, any example, you can use any product. So what happens is that whenever somebody wants to buy our product, there is an agreement signed that's called an SLA, service level agreement. And that SLA basically includes SLOs. What is SLOs? SLOs are service level objects, objectives. So for an example, let's say uh, you are creating an SLA and you have promised your customer that the downtime will never be less than 99.9%. Okay. Another way you have told them that uh, your application or your server will be able to handle at least 1 million requests per minute. And out of those 1 million, only 5 to 10 requests will not be able to fulfill or will not be able to provide the actual response to the user. So these are the small, small objectives that you mention in your SLA. And once SLA is signed, you start working on the product for the client. Now, here comes the SRE engineers part. Now, SRE people are responsible to see whether those SLOs, the objectives written in SLAs are being fulfilled, are being actually delivered. So, what does they do? They create monitoring, they create logging system, they create alerts, they make sure that everything is up and running and if there is any issue, they create alarms or events and inform the right people. They even support the production calls, work in rotational shifts just to make sure that the application is up and running and available and scalable at the time. All the SLOs should be met 
in the SLA. Also, if not any SLA, if not any objective is met, the product team, the company have to pay a good amount of money to the client. So it's a very, very important task. So let's sum it up. What does SRE do? They ensure application is reliable, available, and is meeting the SLO objective. I believe DevOps, SREs, both are clear. Now the buzzword platform engineer. What does platform engineer do? Now let's say DevOps engineer have written an Ansible playbook. They have written some Terraform scripts and they know the internals of those scripts. But the developer team, they are focused on writing the code for the application. So what does platform engineer do? Platform engineer are basically developers who have a knowledge of DevOps as well. And they can also code well. So what platform engineer does is they create a sort of platform for their developers so that they can ease the workflow of development. They hide all the complexities behind the scenes. And developers should only have a knowledge to use that platform. Let's say for an example, AWS. That's the most important example you can have for a platform. You do not know how actually the EC2 instance is being created. Let's say platform engineers, what they do is they make the life of developers easy. They create a platform and hide the complexity of the task behind the scenes. Let's say for an example, AWS, AWS is the most important or the most uh, common platform that you can take, you can think of. You don't know how actually the EC2s are created behind the scene. You have a UI, you click on few button, you select few options, you select the network, you select the storage and that's it. The, the main motive of creating platform engineering is to ease the developer's workflow because a developer should be focused on creating the application. And they should not be concerned about the complexity. So platform engineers abstract that complexity and they create a platform or a UI sort of thing that if I as a developer want a Kubernetes cluster, I just have to go there, click on the button Kubernetes cluster and the Kubernetes cluster will be available to me. That's what platform engineering is all about. Now, I hope all the three terms are crystal clear and you can differentiate between devops sre and platform engineer now once again thanks for watching this video i'll see you in the next one